In this video, I'll be testing nine of the best rated 3D printable tools, ranging from simple prints for everyday use to some special tools that could potentially save you a couple hundred bucks like this pixelated thing. Let's start with this 3D printable fractal vice designed by a person whose name I can neither read nor pronounce. Liang Yi. A fractal vise is used for holding things that are not perfectly rectangular, so basically most things. This is a pretty simple print. It doesn't need any extra hardware except for a 22mm skateboard bearing and some M3 screws, but the assembly was kind of confusing because the instructions are pretty bad. But now that we have assembled the vise, how well does it actually work? I've got 5 daily household items here to test it with, so let's find out. I think it does what it needs to do reasonably well. I mean, let's be real, this is not even close to being a replacement for the real thing, but if you're not planning on hammering the shit out of whatever you're holding with this vice, it should be good enough. I'm giving it a solid 6 out of 10. The next item is this card wallet by Hugo. I know that there's like a bunch of these out there and I'm sure your favorite tech YouTuber has probably tried to sell you one of these hard enough to make you wonder if Ridge Wallet is holding their mother hostage. But this one is the most popular 3D printable version and it's print in place so there's no assembly required and it's okay. I mean it works well if you only carry cards, it's just that this thing is not replacing any real human being's actual wallet. I, like most normal sane people, carry a bunch of non-money related stuff in my wallet and all of that extra crap is just not gonna fit in here. For me it's a 3 out of 10. The third tool on our list is this 3D printable multi-purpose arm by Funky Yard. Now have you ever found yourself in a position where you need to FaceTime someone but your arms are too weak to hold the phone up for longer than 5 seconds and you don't want to set your phone up on the table because the person you're calling is not emotionally ready to see your Jabba the Hutt quadruple chin angle? Well if the answer is yes then this is the print for you. It's easy to print although I recommend printing this larger phone holder because the stock one is too small for most modern phones and it's relatively easy to assemble as well, again no extra hardware required which is great and setting the initial wobbliness aside i'd say it works pretty well with phones but i want to see if i can use it to hold heavier stuff like my lights or perhaps a chunky microphone because actual microphone arms are quite expensive and this one cost me like six dollars to print Okay, so it can hold panel lights and even relatively heavy microphones reasonably well. And in my testing, it maxed out at about 700 grams or 1.5 pounds, which is very respectable for a 3D printed tool. I give this a solid 8 out of 10. Now before we check out the next item, I have to admit there's a lot of stuff in the tools category that I personally wouldn't consider a tool. Like I don't need this phone stand, that's what potatoes are for. I don't need a paper basket because I don't work in the fucking post office. I don't need calipers because I use bananas for scale. I don't need these bag clips because I eat the whole bag in one sitting. You get the idea. My point is I had to eliminate a lot of popular items from the top tools list because I just couldn't find a real use for them. Anyway, the fourth item on the list is the set of gaming chopsticks by Chris1974. I think this is a great invention because first, it's print in place, second, it's super easy to use, you just go like this and you just go like this, you just go like this, you just carefully bring the chopsticks close to the target and then you grab- I was not able to get any usable b-roll for this, I'm sorry. I have the fine motor skills of a sea cucumber so that's completely on me, but this works for a lot of other people so I'd say it's worth printing. I give this a 7 out of 10. The next item on the list is this retractable cable organizer by Matthew Ghost. There's a bunch of cable organizers like this one out there but most of them don't retract automatically. And since this is not a North Korean prison camp, I will not be tricked into doing manual labor. So this is the perfect choice for me. The assembly was pretty simple but immediately I noticed a couple of issues. First issue is that the coil spring loses its springiness pretty quickly. With every subsequent pull, it retracts less than it did the last time and mine eventually broke when I pulled the cable all the way out. The second issue is that it doesn't work for average sized cables. Yes, that's an average sized cable, you can look it up, this is the global average, you don't need to trust me, the data is available on the internet. And also if you use braided cables, that's not gonna work either. 
I think this was a cool idea, but it just doesn't work because of the constraints that come with 3D printing materials like PLA, so I'm gonna give it a 2 out of 10. Okay, before we check out this needlessly complicated tool and compare this 3D printed tool to its $200 real counterpart, I would like to take a second to thank Bamboo Lab for sponsoring this video. As you might have noticed, all of the models we've tested so far in this video have come from Maker World, which is Bamboo Lab's answer to the question, what if everything you could ever need for 3D printing and building your projects was conveniently located on one platform? There are thousands of amazing models for you to choose from, ranging from fun fit toys that you can print in half an hour to super complicated builds like this v8 engine that functions like the real thing now if you were to build something complicated like this you would likely need some additional hardware as well and that's where maker supply comes in Gone are the days of having to manually find and order hardware from a gazillion different websites. All you need to do now is scroll down to the bill of materials section and order the exact parts that you need for the build. You can also find themed model kits and electronics on Maker Supply in case you want to design and build your own projects from scratch. Speaking of designing your own projects from scratch, let's talk about Maker Lab. As someone who designs 3D printable stuff, I am no stranger to how steep of a learning curve 3D modeling can have. And frankly, it's frustrating to have to deal with geometry and chamfers and whatnot when all you want to do is make something cool that you can 3D print. That's where Maker Lab comes in. Maker Lab is home to a bunch of amazing plug and play tools which enable you to make your own 3D models without having any knowledge of 3D modeling or CAD. Say you want to declutter your workspace and design a desk organizer for your stuff. You can just go to the Make My Desk Organizer tool, specify the dimensions for the compartments and import the final model into Bamboo Studio. After that, you can just 3D print it like your regular 3D model and there you have your very own desk organizer that you designed without having to do any 3D modeling at all. Thanks again to Bamboo Lab for sponsoring this project. Go check out Maker World and Maker Lab at the links in the description. Now back to the video. Okay, as promised, this is the next tool and it's a pretty weird one. It's supposed to be a fancy bottle opener but after using 100 grams of filament, 2 hours of printing and using M3 screws for the frankly confusing assembly, my only question is, what the fuck? I just could not get this thing to work. I even tried with bottles of different sizes and this thing just does not work. On the other hand, the simple bottle opener took me 20 minutes and 7 grams of PLA to print and it actually fucking works. Zero out of 10. Number 7 on the list is something that can help millions of affected people all around the world. How many times have you found yourself with your hand stuck in a Pringles can because your BMI and IQ happen to be the same number? If the answer is any number more than zero, first of all, wow. Secondly, the Pringles removal tray is just the thing you need. It slides into the can and then you can just pull it all out and have instant access to enough sodium to kill a medium sized monkey. One important thing to note here is that this design will not work for all Pringles cans. The ones I get are made in Malaysia and this tray printed at 100% size does not fit inside the can. So I printed one at 85% size and that one worked perfectly. Overall, I think it works, but I don't really feel too comfortable with my food touching a 3D printed utensil. So for that reason, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. Okay, before we move on to the next item, I have a serious question. Why are there so many AA battery container designs? Like how many TV remotes do you people have? Are people eating batteries again? I genuinely do not know. Drop a comment if you know something that I don't. Anyway, the next tool on the list is this 3D printable ratcheting screwdriver. The print and assembly were pretty simple and before anything else, I just love the way this ratchet feels. It's very rare for 3D printed mechanisms to feel good, so credit where credit is due, but how well does it actually perform? For surface level screws with no obstructions for the handle, it works about as well as a real screwdriver, but as soon as you start working in tight spaces, it becomes clear that this cannot keep up with a real screwdriver. Also, because of the girthy bit holder, working on deep seated screws feels like the mechanical equivalent of a Cambodian man in a Dutch brothel. Overall, I don't really see a point in printing this because it has limited functionality and it's clunky with no storage for extra bits. It feels great as a fidget toy, but there's a lot of other things to fidget with, like your balls. I rate it a 3 out of 10. 
Okay, the last tool on the list is this 3D printable gimbal by Jin. And going into this blind, I have high expectations because frankly, I'm tired of my handheld footage looking like it was recorded by an overly caffeinated chihuahua. I have crippling anxiety. Also, real gimbals are kinda expensive. But I do have one here that I stole from a college roommate during COVID, so we have something to compare it against. But before we do that, let's talk about the assembly because this thing was a nightmare to assemble. There are no instructions, and the supports make me want to projectile vomit all over the designer. Why does the handle look like fucking Harvey Dent? But setting that stuff aside for now, let's talk about how this thing actually works. It requires some kind of a weight in this bottom section, which in theory should help stabilize the shot, but does it actually work? Well, I'm going to show you a side-by-side -side comparison between the DJI gimbal and the 3D printed one, and you can decide for yourself. It's not great, is it? The projectile vomit were the design, total lack of instructions, and then this. I think this just might be the worst tool on this list today. Even worse than the fancy bottle opener that doesn't work. 0 out of 10, obviously. Before we end the video, if you're new to the channel, I've made a lot of other stuff as well that you can build for yourself. Everything is available on Gumroad, links are in the description. And as usual, a special thanks to my Patreon members for their support. I'm trying out this new format to increase my upload frequency, so drop a comment if you have any feedback. Like and subscribe if you feel like it. I'll see you later. Bye! You and I, we are so random You bring the darkness to the light, split the atom I ignore the fact that this will never last